G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here. Today we'll be continuing the teardown build of the single jingle EK Civic. I'll get started in just tearing everything down, taking out the weather strips. I might fit a short shifter, might fit some engine mounts, not sure yet, but uh, stick around and we'll see what we have in store. So in today's video, I've just finished work. I've come home for the day. I'm gonna start getting to work on the car. I'm gonna pull off the rear bumper, take the mud flaps off. We don't need those. I'll probably chuck them on Marketplace as well. I also wanna get the interior trims off and start to take out these plastic strips and the door cards off and take out these side strips as well. And I'll probably take out the door handles and the mirrors if I get time. All right, so just taking the rear bar off now. I thought I'd give it a crack before I try and tell you how to do it. I've never done a rear bumper on a EK before I did the sedan. Assuming it was pretty similar, it was. There was a bunch of those uh, trim clips along the top here, two underneath, and then a screw in each corner. And I was worried that I'd have to take the tail lights out to get the bumper off, but you don't. You just give it a good yank. There's a couple of tabs there that sort of sits in, so you can watch me embarrass myself on this side. It's kind of, there we go. And now the only thing holding it on is the mud flaps, because there's another screw. Didn't see that one coming. Needed to grab my stumpy chicane Phillips head screwdriver, take off two screws right inside the guard. That's uh, where the mud flaps screwed on. So whip that off. Now, just like the front bar, there's this uh, foam stuff here, plenty of dirt and grot around, which I'll have to clean again. That's why I'm wearing, oh yeah, that's why I'm wearing gloves without just sheeting off. This is what's behind the bumper of your Civic, guys. Crap. I promise we'll get away all of the spiders before we sell this car. So next up, I'm gonna rip off the door cards. Uh, should be just like the EK sedan that I did. Uh, you've got a screwdriver here, Phillips head. Pop that off. The next screw will be inside the handle. Again, another Phillips head. Then if your car has windy windows, you're gonna need a trim tool. Now, I just bought this. Don't know which one I need. Just gonna pick one that looks like it'll work. Bug it down there. That was much harder than it looked. Just kind of have to poke on there with that and spread it apart and it pops off. Then the handle should come out. Being that these cars are now 20 years old, they do get brittle and you can break these plastic parts. So just be careful. With the speaker cover just down here, just give that a pop and it'll crack off. Now they've replaced the speakers in the back. I thought they would have done the ones in the front, but they haven't. Uh, that's just a matter of undoing Phillips head screws in here. I might have to find some uh, six inch two or three ways to put in the front here because that's gonna suck. This is where, right where your ears are. So you need the speakers here for sure. Good thing these days you can get a nice set of speakers, uh, six inch two ways or three ways for like 50 bucks online. Probably even cheaper. If you go to the shop, they'll have uh, some on special. And again, there's no auto sell on uh, base contests anymore. So you can just sort of put anything in that sounds good. There we go. Pop that out. There we go. Unplug the factory speaker and then the door card comes right off. Now what you'll need to do is just dummy on the winder. Pump the window up so you can get to these trims. Now someone's already had this off, which is pretty sucky because this stuff's really sticky. So the first strip's off. Right at the very end here you've got a 10 mil nut to undo. And then it's a matter of just reaching inside and squeezing together these clips. 
pushing them out one by one until you get to the end. Sort of give it just a tap forward and it'll slide off this way and then you just twist onto that uh, little piece here and then off you go. That's one off. Do the same on the other side. Then we'll get to the back ones in just a moment. We're going to color code the door handles. So what I'm going to do is take those off now. I've already undone one screw just with my ratchet. For the second one, you'll just need your little quarter inch drive socket with your 10 mil socket on the end. And then just a matter of cracking that one off. Now, brand new door handles for these are about 20 bucks Australian sometimes plus delivery. If you look hard enough, you can find them including delivery. But that's just as simple as taking that out and then the handle comes right out. So that just lifts out what you need to be mindful of. This one's actually got a busted clip here, but there's a piece that goes in there that holds the door latch. This one was just uh, tied on with some wire. So I'm gonna have to buy a new door handle anyway. And then this bit is the bit that hurts your fingers. You just got to poke this piece off the wire. So yeah, these little pieces here, they clip onto wires and hold the wires in place or rods. Same on the top here, but this one's been damaged or broken off. So we're going to need to replace that door handle. So I'll get a new one. You can keep the lock. So once you take out this spring here, you just pull the lock straight out. Keep that aside. I'll order a new door handle tomorrow little quarter strip is finally off now it's just three plugs you just squeeze them together and pop it out that's the easy bit now to get behind there you need to take the whole rear quarter trim out now that is a mission there's uh two screws up the top here behind the speaker panel so you got to take the speaker panel off take those two screws off one screw here for this bracket then you've got either a baby hook or a christmas tree plug down here Two little press in uh, with a little screw. I don't know what you call those trim clips, just down below that for that rear panel that goes across and sandwiches both sides together. And then there's another two or three more. One here, one here. You've got to pull the seats out and then you've got to pop out the trim. Now, that took me around about 30 minutes, not going to lie, to pull that out. Uh, now I've got to pull it, put it all back in again, but one thing I did notice is these awesome Rockford Fosgate Punch uh, speakers, six inch three ways. The wires here are just been lick and stick together. So I'm going to get the soldering iron out and fix that up while I'm here. I'll do both sides because I'm assuming they'll be exactly the same. Pull the trim off that side. And then that's done. I'm going to leave all of this out though for now while we're getting the car painted or whatever I'm going to do with it. And I've got to get behind here anyway to do the coilovers later. So we'll just keep these off. I'll put them somewhere safe. Uh, give these a clean up. I might even take them outside and pressure wash them. If I've got some terminals, I'll put those on the speakers instead and put the speakers somewhere safe. But I'll check my toolbox first. If not, I'll solder those together. Make sure these are wrapped up and out of harm's way because they are quite a good speaker we'll get some for the front as well so we've got a full matching set surround sound hope you uh, aren't too bored at home watching me pull apart an interior of a civic enough of the boring crap let's do some mods now this is a max peating rods short shift kit this was sent to me a while back probably one of the first things they ever sent me and i just haven't had a chance to use it yet just with so much else going on, but we're going to stick this in. Nicely wrapped up. So there's an Allen key and something. We've got the adjustment here and here is the bottom. Now this one is a fully adjustable one. You can actually loosen off uh, this piece here and screw that up and down. The longer you make the distance between here and here, the shorter the throw will be. Let's uh, make it pretty short. Then you take this piece, stick it on. Now this is going to need some adjustment later, but just to show you how it all works, tighten that down and that will give you some leverage here. That will go in there. And again, same deal with the grub screws. Going to all need lots of adjusting later on, but 
for the purpose of the video right now stick that in there just for now so that'll go on there like so the cool billet alloy piece the fully adjustable threaded rod here so you can adjust that up and down now just for the sake of the video we'll give it a test so all the way over to first i'm sitting in the american side of the car here the usdm side so that is fourth third that's the throw there pretty good i don't have a problem with that uh, we're just going to do all these mods for the sake of it and see if they give us any benefit. You will get all of the factory pieces with the car so you can swap it back at any time. But let's uh, lift the car up in the air, swap out this. What you'll need to do inside the car though before you get started is take the gear knob off. There are four Phillips head screws. Uh, assuming that the console is still here, there'll be six. So there's two at the front here, two in the middle, two at the back. And then it's just a matter of lifting this off. Now these are always pretty much always full of crusty stuff so make sure you give that a good clean while it's out and that's really all you need to do from there this boot is already off so you know it's a good thing that we did that because we can make sure we seal it up when I put everything back on pulling the car apart actually has helped me find lots of little problems that are going to make this car absolutely perfect for the next owner uh, fixed up the speaker wires fixed up the sub wires I've got the subwoofer adjuster here, which I'm going to mount properly. I've threaded it underneath the carpet. I'm going to mount that somewhere. So, you know, you're cruising around, turn the base up, unce, unce, unce. If you're going on a long drive, I don't know about you guys, maybe I'm getting old, but for me, you get a bit of a headache after three hours in the car cruising somewhere. Just turn the base down just like that. Keep powering along, listening to your favorite tunes. Um, but otherwise, we'll keep this adjustment handy. We'll stick it, you know, either down by the seat here or in one of those places in the center console. I haven't decided yet, but we'll stick it somewhere nice and easily accessible. Uh, I've got plenty of cable, so, you know, I can even put it up under here. Have not decided yet. Let me know what you think in the comments, where the heck I should put this thing. So normally you wouldn't need to take this out, but I'm gonna show you a solution. Uh, if you have the means to do so, you really should do. But normally you just unbolt two bolts here, and then you can remove the shifter and swap that out. I'll show you in just a second. But what I'm gonna do now is what Honda should have done. And that is give this a couple of tack welds. <coughs> So once you get those nuts welded there or held in place, if you don't have a welder, you can just use a set of uh, vice grips or pliers or a vice and just jam them in there. But slip this off, gotta take off this rubber boot and there's a little plastic cup inside there. Now this bit's a bit tricky. You gotta really uh, use your brute force and squeeze that over the top of this piece here. Oh no, there we go. Last time I did that, it was much harder, but there you go. So you'll see here the difference between the shifting point or that ball, which is the fulcrum, the swiveling part. Uh, and this one is around about uh, maybe two centimeters or close to an inch. So just a matter of reversing everything, stick the rubber boot on this, stick it back in the car, uh, very hard to get the camera angle underneath there so I can show you exactly what I'm doing, but I'll do my best. I did notice in the last video that some of the camera angles are a bit funny. Very difficult to see what's going on behind the camera while you're in front of it. Uh, and when I was under the car before, I was doing the handheld and yeah, I just, I was looking where I was talking and not where the camera was. So I need to get better at that, but I'm trying to do all that for you guys. So hopefully you're enjoying it and watching me learn at the same time. A little bit of a hack that I just figured out was to take the ball all the way off and then thread it back on after you put this bit of rubber back on. Try to get it roughly in the same spot. Now because this is fully adjustable, you can do this in the car at any time, uh, obviously while you're not driving. Now I did eyeball the threads and make sure it was around about the same as it was before. What I'm gonna do now is get a little bit of wheel bearing grease and just slam in there so that it's nice and slippery and I'll slam it back in. 
lubed up my shaft. Now there's no reason why I can't hit third gear or the next owner. No excuses, boys. Well, now it's just the reverse of everything else. Because I had to take this out, normally you don't if everything is where it's supposed to be, but I've got to put the back end in first and do up these two bolts, which are just behind here. They're 12 mils. So I'm going to slide that in there. Need to grab a couple of bolts. Easier if you put one end in at a time. That means you don't need to hold everything all up at once. So one thing to be mindful of with the adjustment, if you go too long and give yourself a really short throw, you might end up hitting your exhaust. Now I've got a finger space there, so that much gap right between there, so I should be fine. Uh, crazy hard launches and you know, jumping things around, it might come close. I don't think so though, so we're just gonna leave it as is. Then it's a matter of squeezing this over and using the parts that come with the kit. So we have these little spacer washers that go in there. That goes between the shifter and the linkage. And then you have an Allen key bolt, which they supply, which is great. That goes right through the middle there. And then you can just put that little spacer washer on there and tighten it all up. Back into the car now to fit up the gear lever and the rest of it. So that will just go straight on like so. You've got to stretch this rubber boot on, otherwise you get all sorts of dust and smells from outside the car. It's then a matter of taking the gear boots around and slotting that back in place. Back down over that. And then we've got to fit the extension. So that will go on there like so. Tighten down the grub screws. Now this you can twist and adjust however you like. We're just going to do it straight for now. I do want to find another gear knob, maybe like a Type R gear knob or something, a five speed one. And from there you can sort of make the height however you like it. You will want to try it all the way forward, make sure you're not smashing anything. Probably go a little bit lower. We'll go one up, one little bump up. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's test it out. First, second, third, fourth, up to fifth. Need to pump the clutch to get reverse, but I'm sure that works fine. Well, perfect. We've got all the gears, so I'll just leave this in the car for any adjustments later on. I might want to make it taller or shorter. Looks pretty cool. What do you reckon? While I was under the car, I decided that it would be a great time to change the factory torque mounts out for these solid billet aluminium max peating rods torque mounts. Now they go just here. This stops the engine from twisting backwards and forwards under load or when you rev it up and down. That helps put more power to the wheels because anytime there's any movement or flex in the drive line, it affects what gets to the wheels. So although that's not going to make a power difference, it's going to help get the power to the ground better. And it also won't make your ride really hard and vibration-y because uh, the rest of the engine mounts are standard, so it's going to actually help save them a lot more too. So without any more twisting, less chance that you're going to wear out your other engine mounts sooner. So good thing. Nice and simple, nice and cheap. Swap these out. Now, these ones are actually brand new. I'll keep those with the car when we sell it. If you don't like the ride, you can always swap them out. But it's just two bolts, one here, one there. Bang them in, they're 14 mils. So I'm gonna use a rattle gun, get these done real quick. So what I'd forgotten about these was you need to loosen off some of the engine mounts on each side one at a time to let the engine sort of drop down. That'll allow you to slide these on and off. Uh, we've gone ahead and done that now. As I said, these are brand new, nothing wrong with them. They'll get sold with the car. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you appreciate the content. Um, smashing it out now. Uh, sorry this one was a little bit boring. We did need to do that though, so I've taken all the weather strips off, stripped the interior out, given everything a good clean dust off, gotten rid of all of the spider webs, uh, fixed up the stereo wiring, ran that a little bit neater, and also did some soldering. 
if I hadn't had to pull all that stuff apart, I would never have known that the speakers were just twisted together wires. So that's all fixed now. We've got the lower torque mounts done. So they're sorted in the engine bay. We've got a short shifter in there, both from Max Peating Rods. So thanks very much, Max Peating Rods, for that. We've got heaps more stuff coming at you next episode. I need to start thinking about bodywork. I'm gonna to have to probably put on the other guards so I can roll them before I send it off to paint. Uh, I did order some upper control arms because those camber arms in the front, I've had a look at them, they're really cheap and really nasty and they're actually twisted. So personally, I wouldn't trust those upper control arms with a loved one, family, friend or myself. So I've swapped them out for some genuine ones. Uh, so they're on their way, I've ordered those. Uh, I did find a set of rims, which is exciting. I managed to get some really sick 17s at a bargain basement price off a friend of mine. So I'll show you those later on. They're on their way. Now, I do have a ton of engine mods coming for the car. Extractors, full exhaust, the HKS muffler, an air intake, a intake plenum, a strut towel brace, and I've also got a new rocker cover to paint up and put on the car. I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm trying really hard to secure a dyno, to do a dyno test with everything factory standard just so I can show you guys the difference, a set of headers, high flow cap and a full exhaust make with an air intake and an intake plenum on a D series. Now, the reason why I'm doing that, some people might say that's a waste of time, it's not even VTEC, but realistically, this is the most common engine combo in a Civic in the world. So a lot of people do these mods, breathing mods, intake exhaust. Do they do anything? Do they make a difference? Well, I'm here to try and find the answer to that question. Without VTEC, what can be done? Is it worth it? Well, we probably already know the answer to that one, but we're gonna find out what the gains are anyway. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to spool up, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Hi.